when someone is newer to Revit, there is something I've seen almost a universal struggle with, and that is creating new pipes in Revit. And in this video, I'm going to cover how to make them, but also the importance of getting it all right. So to make your pipe, there's a couple of ways to get to the dialog. Uh, one is through the ribbons. You can go to manage, MEP settings, mechanical settings. And you can see in that little fly out there, it says mechanical settings. And then you've got in parentheses MS. MS is the keyboard shortcut. And in Revit, you don't have to hit enter, just MS. And the dialog will then pop up. You're looking for under pipe settings, go to segments and sizes. What I'm going to do is create just a couple of sizes of class 52 pipes so you don't have to sit and watch me make all of them. We can keep this a very brief video. Uh, but in this dialog, you can see we've got you know the segment name, you know, whether it's a copper K pipe, class 52, schedule 10, whatever the case may be. Under the properties, you have roughness, segment description, and then under the size catalog, you have your column for nominal size, internal diameter size, outside diameter size, and these other ones here I just always leave checked. Now, one thing I know I try to do, and I hear frequently that people try to do, is, okay, you find maybe schedule 40 and you want to duplicate that, call it schedule 10, and just modify the internal diameters of the pipe so you don't have to change all three sizes. Unfortunately, you cannot do that. Revit will not allow it. Now, I don't know if this is necessarily just something they didn't think to put in there, or maybe this is a more of a security thing so that someone doesn't accidentally overwrite the properties of that pipe. And the actual set properties of this pipe, uh, I, I can't begin to explain its importance, especially if you're new to BIM. Uh, whenever you are drawing, you're supposed to be drawing with something that is a, a virtual version of the real thing. So it needs to have the right material. It needs to have the right internal diameters, external diameters, nominal diameters, and, of course, pipe roughness. Whenever you're using an add-in, like AutoSpring RVT, we're going to look to your internal diameters for your friction loss if you're using Hayes and Williams or Darcy. Or if you are using Darcy, we're also looking for the roughness. So it is extremely important that we get this right to begin with. Now, in the internal and outside diameters for your pipe, notice that we're in fractions and seemingly, okay, looks like we go to a 32nd of an inch. But most of the spec sheets I've ever dealt with, it's in decimal inches. And I want to enter them in that way, and then I want to see it went in exactly the way I wanted. So first, I'm going to back out of this. I'm going to go to Project Units, go to Piping, Pipe Size. I'm going to change this to decimal inches, and I'll just go to three decimal places. So now I'm going to go back into my mechanical settings and see now... I'm going to be able to do this. Now, I'm going to create a new pipe size. Honestly, I'm putting in all new stuff, so it doesn't matter what I duplicate. I'm going to create a new pipe, pipe segment based on this copper pipe, although it just doesn't matter because I'm getting rid of it all anyway. I like to go with schedule and type, and this is going to be iron ductile, and we'll call this class 52. So here's the segment name down here. And honestly, we can duplicate the size catalog from copper K because it just doesn't matter. We're going to blow it all away anyway. Now, in the class 52, you know, the, the, the absolute smallest of pipe sizes, just like you see here, they don't exist. So I'm going to delete all the sizes in this catalog except for the one that obviously doesn't belong. Now, you can't delete this last one. Revit just won't let you do it. I want to add a new size. I'm just going to add 8 inch and 10 inch. So nominal diameter, we're going to go 8 inch. And then inside diameter here, we're going to go 8.72 and then 9.05. Add another one here. Go 10, 10.75, 11.1.
And when I have all of my sizes entered in, I can get rid of the odd size that I know does not belong. Now, when I'm doing my actual drawing, though, I probably don't want to see my nominal sizes expressed as a decimal. I want to see it as a fraction. So I'm going to go and click OK and go right back to my units. I'm typing in UN. Go back to piping. Pipe size. Fractional inches. But I'm going to run, all, run this all the way up to one two hundred and fifty sixth of an inch and the reason I'm doing this is we go back here and look at this pipe I just made I want this fraction to go as accurate as humanly possible and this is not something you'll typically see a lot of and whenever you run your pipe sizes you're not going to get, you know, 16, 30 seconds for a half inch. You know, it's going to show you, you know, one and a half inches. So you're going to see all of your numbers their normal way. Now, let's go right back into here. Talk about this here again. This is not the proper roughness for this pipe. So I'm going to say zero one zero two zero. Now the value of this, whether or not you're using AutoSpring RVT, I cannot stress its importance. I have seen add-ins that will allow you to use Schedule 40 in Revit for everything, and then its external processes will properly set the values of that pipe, but in the model, it's still the wrong pipe. So when you send this model out to somebody, how are they supposed to know that's not supposed to be Schedule 40? So that's the importance of getting your pipes right in Revit if only for Revit's sake, but certainly when you use a program like AutoSpring RVT and your calculations depend on the accuracy of this information, you want to make sure you get this right.